Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad again today with an old uh, RA9. Uh, I miss this little guy. And on top is the uh, Origami 3. It is just a slightly updated version of our failed uh, rocket powered glider thing for Venus. And look at that moon. Man, that is pretty. Anyway, our relative inclination with said moon is down to an appropriate level, so we will activate our SAS, set our throttle to full, ignition sequence start. All engines are lit, let's get those clamps off. Uh, this is just a slight upgrade to the last RA9 that flew, of course we've got the E1 Advanced on all four boosters, but uh, we just got a new upgrade for our RL10. Uh, I forgot the model number already, it's been all of like 10 minutes. But uh, it's no longer the 3-3s, it's like the RL-10A something. Anyway, much higher thrust, a little bit better efficiency. It's going to make that uh, upper stage go through a whole lot faster. But uh, this has all the Delta P required to get uh, old Origami 3 on his way to Venus, so there's no point in shelling out the extra cash for a big old DN series when we've got a very capable lifter right here. So I'm going to go ahead and try my best to uh, get this little guy into orbit, and uh, I will see all of you there. And well, while we're on the way up, I might as well tell you that I did in fact do a uh, deorbit test flight of this in simulation after making some changes to the package. Uh, you can see them in my spangly new editing thing that I taught myself how to do because I'm stubborn. All of this is freely available on YouTube. Anyway, uh, I removed that upper fuel tank that was exploding the uh, last time we tried to put this uh, down on Venus. And uh, basically sized down the uh, transfer stage, or really our orbital maneuver stage. Because uh, we're not going to insert it in orbit, we're just going to deorbit the whole thing. Um, and hope for the best, really. As long as we have connection, I think we can pull this off. So in the uh, bottom of your screen there is the test flight, and the top right is the actual flight. I Now that I'm recording this narration, I see exactly how synchronous this is, and it's kind of weirding me out. Uh, it's That's a trippy feeling. So the test flight is what I'm going to talk about, because the launch went uh, very, very smoothly. Uh, we basically got it up to a suborbital uh, trajectory. We just uh, did not lay on the uh, RL-10 stage uh, as much for the test flight as we did for the actual flight. And there you see separation on the actual flight. We'll be coming up here on stage sep in just a second. I did forget to lock those tanks, which is what I'm doing in the larger portion of the screen. But yeah, test flight. That's what we're talking about. Got it up to a suborbital velocity. Uh, fairly high, uh, I think around uh, 7 point some odd uh, kilometers per second. Uh, ditched the RL-10 stage and then just pushed the atmosphere under the power of its own engine as quickly as we could. Uh, we tried to burn north so that we could get some semblance of a uh, connectivity, although it, uh, it really didn't happen. So you'll see me there fretting because I did not check for local ground stations and I'm not going to have a satellite overhead. So my dreams of deploying the uh, the glider in atmosphere and kind of giving it a rundown test were not exactly a thing. But so uh, while we're watching that deorbit, uh, top screen is me plotting the uh, course for Venus. There was uh, a little bit of tinkering with nodes because it was uh, not the most efficient transfer and I neglected to figure that out. So bottom screen is the push into the atmosphere. You notice we are trying to burn a little bit to the north and now getting it angled into prograde uh, while our actual mission is getting aimed along its uh, vector to make its exit burn for Venus. All genuine entertainment. There's the light on our RL-10s. Meanwhile, our test flight. Yeah, a couple of explosions there, but it was just uh, off angle from me not paying attention or me watching the map too much. I could have, I feel like I could have easily uh, avoided that had I been paying attention. But it survived uh, re-entry just fine, and now we can turn our full attention back to the Origami 3 as it makes headway for Venus.
Oh, no connection. That's a problem. Dang it. Lack of satellite network. Well, it shouldn't be too long before we are over a ground station again. I say that's odd. No, that is definitely just over the horizon. And does not look like a satellite is going to come to our aid anytime soon. So we will just have to time warp it out. I'm probably going to have to replot this node also. Because we are wasting all kinds of time. Come on over the horizon, folks. You can do it. There we go. Oh, no. Wrong way. Okay. Now we have connection. We're only three minutes past it. I think we can handle this. So, uh, stage? Ullage? Ignition? There we go. AJ-10 is lit. How's our electric charge? We are charging. Fantastic. And if we can charge here at Earth, that means we can charge uh, out by Venus, certainly. Five hundred or so meters per second. Let's see how well this is going to work out. Good gravy. Two hundred and thirteen days till we get there, huh? That figures. Do, do, do. Well, uh, I might as well tell you about the changes I made to the spacecraft. Um, as you can see, there's no tank up here between the heat shield and uh, the craft itself, responsible for holding uh, attitude during re-entry. It's all going to be done back here. We're going to deorbit all of this with us, and when we hit the appropriate altitude or speed, we will separate. This still has separation motors on it. This now has separation motors on it, and then we will deploy our spacecraft and uh, take a trip through G uh, Venus's uh, upper atmosphere and well, well we'll see how well that works out for us and hopefully we'll be able to net some very interesting science hopefully from more than one biome but uh, remains to be seen all right oh very close but not quite let's plot a node and see if we can't nail this to the floor a little bit go and let's just uh, find Venus here focus view and see if we can't just dial this in a bit more nope other way all right we'll go that way and we'll go that way and we'll zoom in and oh, of course we're gonna come in uh, 90 degrees opposed to all the satellites that we swarmed with and see yeah look I told you we're gonna end up with a cluster it doesn't matter Hmm. Oh, wrong. Well, interesting. I would like to do this during the day on Venus. And I would kind of like to be a little higher. Yeah, oh, well. Uh, we should get decent spread. And so, if we can maintain that, oh, node is in one minute. We need to do this right meow. It's only 97 meters per second. I do have another fuel tank inside the fairing that we can use uh, to unlock to give us a little more leeway on this uh, this number. Right now we have enough and I'm not overly concerned with it. We will save that fuel for our descent. So let's ullage in this AJ-10 again. Where are you going, dude? Ignition? Yeah, right about there would be good. That would be fantastic. If you could not tip all off balancey and stuff, shut down. We'll just uh, we'll chase the node a little bit. 
No, we're within 0.3 meters per second. Let's uh, see what that bought us. Please, please, please be on course. I, what? No, we're way the hell out there. Okay. What a difference a day makes. Yeah, let's see what kind of havoc that's wreaking on our course. All right, we'll take it. Nope. Bring it back. Bring it back. Oh, I don't have any reverse facing thrusters, do I? So maybe we'll just spin around. Nope. Try this. That seems to be working. All right. No. Come on. You can totally do it, man. It is uh, very much working. Yeah, and I guess I would like to be on this side where they're all very high in the atmosphere, or very high in orbit so that they're overhead longer. All right, you know what, we'll uh, we'll just take that for now. We can correct the rest of this later, so let me jump out here very quickly and shut this down before RCS ruins everything. There we go. Fantastic. And that's a quick save, and that's an episode. So, uh, fingers crossed for this mission, everybody. Um, Ooh, can I set up Kerbal Alarm Clock for it yet? Or is it just going to give me an SOI change? No, I do not want... Yeah, no, that's in like a day. So we're going to have to wait to do that. No big deal, I'll do it later. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.